Tara Williamson, Dijnikaz, Gavashkikama, Gai Opaswak, and Dijeba. My name is Tara Williamson. I am a member of the Opaswak Cree Nation, which is in northern Manitoba uh, in Treaty 5. And I was raised in Gavashkikama, Swan Lake, Manitoba, which is in southern Manitoba in Treaty 1. I have close family uh, connections to Beardies Okamasis uh, in Saskatchewan, which is in Treaty 6. I went to school for a long time, and so I have degrees in social work, law, and Indigenous governance. So my full-time uh, gig is I'm a senior researcher with the Indigenous Law Research Unit at the University of Victoria, and I'm also a research fellow with the Yellowhead Institute. So first of all, it was a, it, the, the name is a bit misleading because it makes it seem like it happened just in the 60s, but the 60s scoop actually happened sort of from the early to mid fifties um, into the early eighties. So it actually spans like a 30 year period. And it was a period of time where indigenous children were um, scooped, they say scooped, so taken from their families just without consent, um, but often done in ways that were um, intentionally coercive or misleading. Uh, we also find at this time, you know, there was sterilization happening at the same time. Generally it's understood at least 20,000 children um, but I, I like with anything, I'm, I'm sure that's actually a low number. There was no sort of rhyme or reason for where they went. And so kids ended up all over the world. I have um, uh, an auntie who's passed away now, but who lived in Ireland. Like essentially it was human trafficking. I um, know of that children were sold, um, to, particular to the American market. Uh, children were marketed as being... Um, this one can pass as white. So you could go through like a flip book of like adopted of children. You could adopt like blue eyes, light skin kind of deal. So there's a lot, I mean, I think there's a there's layers to the answer of why. I mean, first of all, I mean, the, my heart of hearts is, I don't know, how could you do that? Why? But I think that, you know, the fundamental answer is racism and uh, colonization and, you know, power. I think those are the fundamental answers. There are more children, Indigenous children in care now than there were at the height of the residential school um, movement. And that when we look at certain jurisdictions, in particular Manitoba, I think particularly the prairies, but for sure Manitoba, we know that something insane, like 90%, 85 to 90, if not higher, percent of the kids in care are Indigenous, even though we know that Indigenous people make up, you know, less than 10% of the pop general population. And so that's the millennial scoop, is that children are being apprehended by child welfare agencies um, at rates disproportionately higher than non-Indigenous children. Think, of, think about a community. Think about, you know, whether it's your city or town or reserve, but think about a community and there's no children. Like, how creepy is that? What a weird, creepy feeling that is and, and how dysfunctional it is and how it takes away people's sense of purpose, right? It takes away, you know, grandparents have roles in taking care of children and teaching children who we pass knowledge on to. Um, the sense of purpose of taking, you know, there's so many systems of governance are based on having everybody there, right? And every mother in the community, every parent, every grandparent in the community feeling that loss. What we see consistently throughout colonial history is the controlling of, of families and communities through children and taking the children. 